hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cookie with your friendly Italian. I'm Jim Bureau. I'm Marilyn Bureau. And we wish you a happy new year We and uh, all great things that are going to happen in the new year. And uh, I hope you had a good Christmas with your family. That's what's all important, right, Marilyn? Right, and we're glad to be back. Yep. And we're going to deal with some soups to keep you warm on these cold yeah. days. Cold weather. Let's, uh, let's talk uh, uh, what is good comfort food soup. So we're going to be talking about uh, some soups. We're going to give you some recipes. We're going to give you a mushroom soup, a farro soup, uh, a French onion soup. We're going to do some some soups in the slow cooker, which will be very, very interesting. We're uh, going to talk about the local restaurants in the area, and we're picking out what we feel is some, their best soups. Some of them, one yes, there's some really great soups at some of the restaurants. Right, and we're going to be talking a little bit about a wonderful life because one of our soups ties in uh, to a wonderful life. And we are also going to be talking about a bucket list, and we'll get to that in a little bit to tell you what a bucket list is. Now, let's start, Marilyn, with um, we had a great celebration, wonderful life. We, di we did. It was no, cold, wonder, but it was still worked out well. It was very well. nice. And then uh, the tradition is that the local businesses downtown serve uh, a, sort of a cook-off of soups and chilies. Uh, so we found a very favorite one. This soup is fabulous. It's at the Seneca Museum of... Uh, waterways, in, business, uh, yeah, business and waterways. Industry whatever. and waterways. Industry and waterways right. is the name of it. And Barbara Dorvey makes this. Apparently, she got it from one of the local uh, wineries because it's a it's a uh, it's a Chardonnay mushroom and dill soup. And uh, it, it's one of the best soups I've tasted. It's rich, it's, uh, as you you will be you will tell from the. Uh, from the, uh, the recipe, but it is really, really a very, very good soup, and uh, I'd like to share that with you. And if you get it, try this one. You right. you will love it. Everybody that has tasted this soup wants to do it themselves. Right, and they run out every year, yep. on, uh, way ahead of t everybody else because it's so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a large pot and right off the bat we're going to put two sticks of butter in there. See, that's what makes it good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it good. And we're going to add to that uh, two ribs of, of chopped celery, two onions that are chopped, uh, a pound of mushrooms that is sliced very thin, uh, one uh, minced garlic clove, and we're going to cook that down for about 15 minutes to get rid of some of the moisture that that, that is in there. Now, the rush, mushroom choices, I mean, you can use any kind of mushroom. And it will change the taste of it. But, you know, the more exotic mushrooms you get, you know, it'll yeah. be a different taste. Or you yeah. can just use regular mushrooms. Now, what this is my little add-on to it. We talk about mushrooms. I, I have a, a jar of dried porcini mushrooms. And uh, I... I'll take, in this particular recipe, I'll take some of those dry porcini mushrooms, about uh, a quarter of a cup, and pour some hot water in it, and that's going to go into this to create uh, more of a, uh, of a flavor to it. So now we, we've cooked this down for about 15 minutes. Now we're going to take a half a bottle of Chardonnay, and we're not talking about cooking wine. Don't yes, you've got to use the real Chardonnay. You've got to use, use the, the real local stuff. Chardonnay. I think this recipe probably came from one of the yep. uh, we have wineries some great that Chardonnays have here. Chardonnays. So. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna pour that in with this uh, the one quarter cup of uh, porcini mushrooms that have been soaked in one cup of of hot water. And we're gonna cook that down for about five minutes. Then we're gonna add one cup of flour and we're gonna let that simmer and stir it. Uh, for about five or five minutes. We want to get rid of that flour taste. And the only way you can do that is by cooking that down. It's like, yes. So now we're going to add to that one and a half quarts of chicken stock, uh, preferably your own, but uh, the, there's some great uh, boxed uh, chicken stocks and out there. And if you're vegetarian, you can put a vegetable stock in here, too. Yeah, and in fact, I've, I've got a recipe. I know you for, do, yeah. but I'm just saying that, you know, anytime he 
uses a meat stock, you can always change it to a vegetable stock right. and have. Um, yep. And then we're going to add a, a cup of sour cream, some salt and pepper, and we're going to cook that for about 15 minutes. Put it in a bowl, little chopped scallions and parsley garnish over the top. And let me tell you, you <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you're going to have a great, great soup there. So you should should try that. So now, Marilyn, um, let's talk about the local restaurants and some of the wonderful uh, soups. Some they of have? the absolutely wonderful soups. Uh, I've got a total of ten restaurants that have great soups that have really, really good soups. And let's start right at at, at Fall Street. Okay. And uh, we have New York Deli. Right. And they have a wonderful Italian wedding soup, which right. is little meatballs, a little pastina, some vegetables, vegetables in it. It's really a good soup. Then we'll go next door to Red's. And Red's uh, has a great chili. They do have a good chili. And it's not overpowering. It's nice and so smoothing. Uh, they have a, so you should uh, look at that. Then uh, across the street, you got Parker's. Parker's, well, Jay was always an excellent cook and always made incredibly thick soups. His chowders are in very, very good. So anything that's sort of cream of or thickened uh, are absolutely delicious, although his tortilla soups are good too. But you, With Jay's soup, you take a spoon and you can stick it in the, in <laughs> the thing and it stands straight up. Uh, but, uh, but it's very good. He's renowned for his, his thick soups. <clears throat> Then we have Opus, which has uh, a wonderful tomato and roast red pepper Peppers. soup. Yes, Great stuff. one of their one of the things that they offer uh, daily is the the tomato soup with a grilled cheese, the tomato pepper soup with a grilled cheese. That's very good. And then we'll go across the street to the Gould. And we have had their mushroom soup. Their mushroom soup was wonderful, but their oyster last chowder, night. last night they had oyster chowder. He makes very interesting soups, and he also makes, uh, there is there is a chef there that really likes to make soups. So, and there was a squash soup that I loved at one time in their carrot soup, but the very, very good soups. Different, the two mushroom soups are quite different, but they're delicious, both yes, delicious. Yes, they are. Forgot the Happy Family. Happy Family has what they call a special soup. And it's enough to f to feed two people. It really, but it's, yes. Uh, it is very, very good. So you, that, that's, that's with rice noodles and a lot of vegetables yes. in it. And then we have Little Italy, which just opened up a while back, and they have greens and beans that are outstanding. So you might want to want to try those. And then right down the road is uh, Antonina's, uh, or excuse me, Avocoli's which makes an Italian creamy chicken soup with vegetables that is really, really good. And really, that's not good. thick. It's creamed. Yes. You know, it has a little cream in it, but it's not really thick, but it's very, very tasty. And then uh, we have the Third Ward Tavern. Yeah. And they make a gumbo with that, shrimp New and sausage. A, a New idea, Orleans gumbo. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very good that I've had there. So. Yeah, and, Cajun, and we're going to, down the road, we're going to be talking, we're, we're going to go to New Orleans by our osmosis and talk about the Cajun food of, 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 uh, of uh, New Orleans. And then the last is a new restaurant that just opened up, the Cafe 19, uh, which is at the uh, Generations Cajun. Bank. Yes, and that uh, Cafe 19 stands for the 19th Amendment, which meant that in 1920 the vote for women came to the United States. Right. So that's why the number is there. So those are some soups. You, you and that was the tomato soup that you were going to talk about there. And they and yes. Casey does make wonderful soups. Yes, I, she I've does. tried the tomato. I'm sure there'll be a lot of other ones there too. Yeah. So uh, those are the soups. Let's give them another recipe. All right. Let's give them a recipe which uh, we are very very fond of, which we first had in uh, Lucca, Italy, which is an old fortress town in uh, in Tuscany, and we had a zuppa de farro. Now, what is farro? Farro is one of the oldest uh, grains in existence. It goes back to that when they just when they got into the pyramids, the farro grain was in the pyramids. They, that the, so that the the pharaohs could you know do that thing, so 
And when we were in uh, in uh, Luca, we went there to get a dish called uh, this restaurant chicken with a brick on top of it, and we had this uh, this soup this uh, uh, this farro soup. And uh, it's really a, a very, very interesting soup, easy to make, uh, and very, very healthy for you. Uh, you can buy farro uh, either at Sauter's or you could buy it at Wegmans. And if you see changeable, you can e use either one of them to, to make this soup. And I don't think they're as allergic as some other products or wheat products. I think people I that think have, right. yeah. I think people that have wheat allergies night before it's like making uh, making beans you got to soak farro we're going to soak one half a pound of uh, farro in cold water overnight then we're going to drain and we're going to rinse it and then we're going to heat up uh, two and a half quarts of either water or broth add the farro and cook uncovered for one and a half hours drain save one cup of the cooking uh, cooking water and uh, now we'll, we'll go ahead and add all the wonderful ingredients uh, to it uh, you, you, you know, you can either do this in the oven or you can do it, uh, saute it on, on, uh, on top of the stove. Take a half a cup of oil, half an onion, some celery, some carrots, some uh, garlic uh, cloves, some parsley, some thyme. All these are wonderful things. Yes. Oregano. And pancetta. Now, pancetta is Italian bacon, basically. It's, it's not as cured as it's, our bacon. Right. And it's nori, basically nori the same. It. And yes. uh, you can get it there. And we're going to cook that until it becomes golden for about seven minutes. Uh, and then we're going to add to that one can of diced tomatoes with the juice. Cook that for two or three minutes. Then we're going to add one cup of the farro water that we saved. Uh, and we're going to season it with a little salt and pepper, cook that for about 10 minutes, add the farro, uh, and cook that for about 30 minutes. Take it out and uh, put it in a, in a plate, drizzle it with a little olive oil, sprinkle a little Parmesan cheese. You could also add to that cooked sausage or cooked beans to give it a little bit more uh Make it more food. of a stew or a main meal. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yes. And uh, so that is a wonderful dish that comes to us from Luca. There's also a restaurant, Marilyn, in Rome uh, called uh, Corsi di Roma mm -hmm. uh, that ha ha they're noted for, for this, this soup, this um, farro soup. So you want to try something different? It's good for you. Uh, on, a hot, on a cold winter night, this hot, wonderful farro soup will be great. So you might want to try try it again. That. It can be kept vegetarian, also. Yes, you know, it, it doesn't have to have meat in it, and doesn't have to have uh, meat broth. All right, I mentioned a bucket list. Yes, you did. On Sunday in the Finger Lakes time, uh, Susan Porter Cl uh, Porter uh, did an article on what a basically the whole Finger Lakes region is really coming alive. And there, every, where she goes someplace, and she mentions that she's from Seneca Falls, they go, ooh, ah, we, we know what it is, we know about the wines, we know <clears throat> about all the wonderful things that are available uh, in this region. So we're getting a name for ourselves. I, we feel very lucky uh, to live here. This is right. a great place to live. And it's getting better and better all the time. So what she decided to do was she's made a list of things that the, she wants to do. Or that, she hasn't, list, that, that she hasn't that she hasn't, hasn't seen or would, thinks that she should try. And yeah. there is, there are many many. I mean, we could go on forever. But well, we're going to give her give what she has in mind, and then maybe you want to make a bucket list, or now, you can give you, us some ideas, yeah, or we can some, well, we have some ideas. Now, mind you, most of these things are not going to be done right now. A few of them can be. But in this cold, you won't cold be weather, doing them. But we're going to give you her list. Then maybe next week we could give, our, give some That's of right. our list. And you should make a list. And, and, and really enjoy the wonders can... of, this, of this area. Now, Susan's ideas are bike around the lake. Not me, <laughs> but she's going to bike around the lake. 
uh, go over to Auburn, to the Seward House. That's a very interesting place. It really is. Uh, and it certainly was highlighted by the people visiting when the Lincoln came. Uh, they did a lot of research there. Right. They, uh, you know, so that was, that was interesting. That sort of came to the forefront. Drive down to Geneva, go to the uh, state park there, bring with you a, a picnic and a bottle of wine and do it when the sun is setting and sit there and eat and drink and watch the sunset. Now that I could handle. You, yes, you can handle that That, that would one. be right. How about the canal boats down here? You want to get one of the canal boats and, and travel overnight or a couple of nights. You, I'm sure you could work out something. You don't have to rent it for the whole week. You rent it There's for some that week. are rented for the week that you can rent for less, and there, there are some tour boats down there too. So and I might, think that will continue as, as people begin to know the area a little bit more. Absolutely. And then um, you can uh, take a walk uh, at Teganic Falls. Walk up to the That's falls. That's always fun. Uh, our, really. our grandkids have loved every time they love going to the falls. And how about canoeing? In the Montezuma Wildlife, well, you can go around and, and you can go uh, kayaking at the Fuzzy Guppy and go, go through the canal locks and everything. Right. So, you have that to do. And uh, travel out to Samson Park, and uh, go to the depot and see the white deer. They in the in the fall of the year, you can go and they have uh, usually they have some tours. I yeah. don't know, you have to check on that, but they do have tours of the white deer. All right, and. Uh, Maybe you should uh, think about when uh, the blueberries and strawberries and cherries come in. Why don't you go out and pick some? You can bring a bottle of wine with you, too. <laughs> you can bring a bottle of wine any place. <laughs> Jim will always have a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, go over to Canandaigua. Uh, uh, they have uh, CMAC over there where they have all these All kinds of performances. Performances. How about going down to Watkins Glen and seeing a NASCAR uh, race? Uh, or go to Canandaigua and do a cooking class at the Culinary Institute over there. That's These always are all fun. And the, that, the restaurants there, the restaurant's nice there too. Uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of cooking classes and all kinds of things to do. And you know, we're, we are in paradise. This is mm -hmm. paradise. But in paradise, a little rain must fall. Well, maybe not rain, snow, ice, wind, freezing rain, freezing. But it's all worth it because we live in the Finger Lakes, and it's a great, great, great area. Now, if you want to get away from it, you can say, "Okay, let me let me go down south and warm up for a while." I think we might do that for a couple of weeks. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that's available. So. Start thinking about a bucket list. And you can always let us know at Finger Lakes. One dot com and healthy cooking at fingerlakes one dot com, and uh, we certainly like the information and we'll put it on a show. Absolutely, great place to live. Enjoy it. All right, let's go to a slow cooker. All right, You're, yes, Jim. Jim discovered a slow cooker a couple years ago. He insisted on getting one and insisted on buying one for one I, of his sons. Yeah, I used to be a food snob. Oh. I'm not going to cook in a slow <laughs> cooker, but I started it, and it's so easy, and I want to give you some recipes for some soups. One French onion soup in a crock pot, all right? So easy. French onion soup has got to be, has got to be the onions have got to be golden, and if you do it on top of the skull, you got to sit there and stir the thing and make sure they don't burn, and then do that for about a half an hour, which is wonderful, but you can take this and do it in a crock pot, and you just sort of put the onions in there with a little butter. And uh, in this case, uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, use two uh, two onions and slice them thin, and uh, and uh, we're gonna put a, one stick of, of butter in there, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of thyme and salt and pepper and a bay leaf. Put the top on and cook it for eight hours. It's not going to burn. It's going to get nice and golden. And then after that, add to that some white wine, some chicken stock or beef stock if you if you uh, so inclined. Cook it for an additional half an hour, half an hour, uh, and uh, put it in a bowl. 
get some uh, baguette, toasted French bread, put some Yurie cheese on the top, put that on top of... You can always throw it in the oven and brown the cheese brown a little bit. Right. If you, if you would like that, too. And uh, you have... You can, the other thing you might want to do, sometimes I'll take a, a little cognac and pour in there, sure. too. Sure. But it, it's easy, and you, uh, you're you eating as as good onion soup that, you, that you'll right. ever have. Right, and it's so, easier to make than the other way. It, very, very easy. Another slow cooker. We talked about vegetable stock versus chicken right. stock. Uh, vegetable stock, again, uh, in a slow cooker. And basically all you have to do is throw all this stuff in the slow cooker, put the top on, and ole, uh, you, uh, you, you, you cook it for about seven, eight hours, and it's done. Right. Now, I will take, let, let's, let me, let's go through this thing. I'm gonna, I will take a quarter cup of olive oil and two onions and carrots and celery and parsnips and mushrooms that are quartered and uh, uh, tomato paste. And I like to throw it in the oven at a high temperature for about 425, 450 degrees to get that browniness. Right, down. and it, there's a sweetness that comes out in vegetables when they're roasted. But then when you put them in the crock pot, then, they, then you're making them in the soup, that gives it a very good flavor. All right, so you're gonna do that, then put it in the crock pot, add some green Swiss chard, whatever you wanna do, some thyme, some bay leaf, salt, pepper, uh, some water and uh, let her let her go. Let her cook for eight hours, and uh, and you're 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 done. And uh, it's there. When it comes out, just drain it, freeze the uh, vegetable stocks in quart containers, and uh, you'll be surprised how good it is. Now, if you want meat, have the meat flavor in it. When you take it out, you freeze it without the meat. Then whatever f uh, meat you want. When you take it out, put some meat in it if you'd like. If you don't, you just uh, want it more than just uh, a vegetable type of, of, of dish, a vegetarian type of dish. So that is really good. And it, it's wonderfully flavored, and you might want to give that a try. The vegetable stock that you can buy in the package is not as good as the chicken or beef stock that you can buy. So if you're going to go the vegetable stock route, you're better off making it on your own. And uh, lastly, another uh, dish called red bean soup, which is a, a, a soup from New Orleans, which is basically red beans and rice. And again, what we're doing is just soaking the beans overnight, uh, draining them, adding some onion and shallots and celery and parsley and garlic and green peppers, and go over go over to Sauter's and get a ham bone, Put that in there, or a smoked, uh, smoked. Uh, you smoked. They have smoked ham bones. Yes, they, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, which gives it a lot of flavor. Uh, and add some water and black pepper and uh, thyme and bay leaves. Cook it for five hours. Uh, scoop out some of the at the end of the five hours. Uh, some of the beans puree them so it gives a little thickness to it. Or you can puree the whole the whole thing. Uh, and serve it with some rice, and uh, you're done. So, so we've gone through an awful lot of soups. We didn't do a demonstration this week. The next show we'll start with with Jim demonstrating in the kitchen again. We got a little behind with celebrating the holidays, but uh, we'll get back on track. Yep. And on the horizon of upcoming shows uh, as we go through uh, January and February. Uh, we have an infamous, well-known bread maker that is going to be with us. <laughs> we are going to be visited by a local chef owner, uh, uh, Via. He came from Rome, Italian, and uh, uh, was in New York. And we are so happy to have him with us here in Seneca Falls. And he, we're going to talk to him about uh, his his what he cooks and that type of thing. Then we're going to take a trip to Greece. We're going to talk about Greek uh, Greek cooking and right. the heritage of, of Greek cooking. And, the, and most of this is we're talking about today. They were mentioning that the Mediterranean diet is the best diet for everybody, the most healthy diet, and that was mentioned on television. And this is the basis: the Italian food, the yeah. Greek food, the Spanish food, where you're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables and and you know simple preparations of meats and. 
that kind of thing. So. And, and uh, we talked about earlier, we're going to go, go, as we get closer to Lent, we're going to go to New Orleans and then try some of their wonderful Cajun food. And don't forget the bucket list. Get your bucket list going. Mm. This this Seneca, uh, this whole area of the Finger Lakes is a great area, and enjoy it and take advantage of it. And if you put it on a bucket list, you're going to be closer to doing some of these things that you've never done before. So there we go. Try not to freeze. <laughs> okay. Uh, might want to drink some wine. <laughs> Hot some tea soup. helps, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as much fun as no, wine. No, it isn't as much fun, <clears throat> as fun. And fun as wine, but hot tea in the middle of the afternoon. That's why they have tea in England. You know, those were very draft, drafty places. So right. that's why there's tea in the at late afternoon. So, so it's good to be back with you all. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you uh, down the road. And we'll be doing some more cooking. And, uh, we're going to have some fun. Enjoy. Ciao. Ciao.